you want to learn the craft of writing, and if you want to do well in your studies and on your job, if you want to enjoy self-expression and want to become a little more self-reliant, then this course is for you. My name is Imran Chaudhary. Welcome to Virtual University and welcome to Journalistic Writing. In this course, we'll study all about writing skills which are needed for journalistic communication. In this course, we'll study what is good and bad writing. In this course, we'll also talk about the characteristics of good writers. We'll see how do they work, how do they plan their writings. We'll also talk about how to fine-tune our sentences and then go into very logical paragraphing. We'll also talk about different styles of writing and then into journalistic types like what is editorial and how to write meaningful and effective editorials, what different mechanics are involved in its writing. We'll also talk about the technicalities involved in feature writing, column writing, how news are written, how they're different from opinion writing, and what are headlines, what news which come on the front page of the newspaper and which go inside the newspaper are different from each other. I believe you'll enjoy with me this course and I, you know, wish you best of luck and myself also. Today, I will not try any hyperbole or any over-exaggeration to stress upon the importance of writing skills in your personal and professional life. Rather, I'll prefer quoting Dr. Donald Norman. Dr. Norman is actually a cognitive scientist working with the Stanford University. He was once asked by, you know, some uh, journalists, by researchers, that if he could rank 20 most significant Rather, I would say 20 smartest tools which uh, had the greatest impact on human civilization. Dr. Norman thought for a while, and then his pen started moving. And after a brief while, he enlisted those 20, you know, tools. The first tool which he wrote was writing skills. And then there were many other 19. Then, after another brief boil, what he did actually, he encircled the first tool and deleted the remaining 19 and handed that sheet over to his, you know, colleagues. So, according to Dr. Norman, it was writing skill which had the greatest influence on human civilization. Let's see what actually, you know, he wrote at that time. Let's take a look. The invention of writing is probably the most important tool for human advancement, making it possible for each new generation to build upon the work of the previous, to transmit knowledge from person to person across cultures and time. I repeat, the invention of writing is probably the most important tool for human advancement, making it possible for each new generation to build upon the work of the previous, to transmit knowledge from person to person, across cultures and time. My dear students, I don't know whether you agree with Dr. Norman or not, but I don't find any option but to agree with him that yes, these are writing skills which has brought revolution in human contact and in human civilization all over the world. Even so, I would say, that writing skills from your first grade through your school, college, university and throughout your adulthood will remain very important in your life. And very frankly speaking, very, very frankly speaking, all human beings have something to express. I mean, styles may be different. I mean, writers may write on paper. Painters may paint on canvas. 
gardeners may show expressed through flowers. Singers, you know, they can express through their singing. Musicians can express through their songs and what not and what not. You know, just imagine that you don't express for a day. Try it. You know what's going to happen? You'll burst. You'll feel like, you know, writing a long letter to your friend. You'll feel like, you know, singing a song or drawing a painting or making your garden, you know. In old times, men of religion, they used to go to wilderness and they would impose silence on them. But actually, they would go there to do what? They would go there to have a word with the God. They had lots and lots of thoughts, you know, welling up in them. And in the wilderness, very quietly, very, very quietly, in very, very private moments, they would share their thoughts with the God. So what they were doing? Of course, they were expressing. So this is how I believe the expression has importance in human, you know, life. And when we talk about writing or painting, it's expressing the same thoughts with the help of pen or brush on a piece of paper or on a white canvas. So this is how things, you know, do. Now, let's try to find out what writing is. And we are going to do it together, I and you. Okay? Are you ready? All right. Let's find out what writing is. And I'll give you the first point. And the second point, you are going to give, give me my student. Okay, the first point, writing is what? Well, writing is very practical. Writing is very practical. I mean, every day in our life, morning to evening, inside home, in the market, what we do actually, we are making lists. We are preparing reminders, you know, jotting down, jotting down ideas. We are writing instructions. We are writing notes. So writing, don't you think, is practical? Of course, yes. Now, second point you give. Come on. Try. Come on. Try. What did you say? Oh, yes. I agree with you. Writing is job-related. Thousand and one. And I believe you've given me the most important point where writing skills are involved. All professional and white-collar workers write a lot. They are busy writing reports. They are busy writing, you know, letters, you know, memos. They are busy writing, I mean, see, day-to-day, -day, you know, issues, problems are there. They are like, you know, pen and paper writing solutions and whatnot and whatnot. Okay, now let's uh, go down to the third point. Writing is social also. I mean, you know, we write, all of us, most of us, if not all of us, write, uh, you know, letters of gratitude, thank you letters, letters of appreciations, you know, and we invite our friends. And the fourth point, I believe writing is highly stimulating also. Writing provokes our thoughts to come out, and through pen, they like, get on our papers, okay, and we then very logically, in a very concise manner, we like, you know, make them presentable. And last but not least, writing is therapeutic also. Ask yourself that many a time, you know, you feel that perhaps you cannot express your feelings through speaking. So you keep your feelings very much inside your heart, then someday you realize that perhaps there is another very important, you know, medium, very important mode, and let's make use of it. So what you do actually, you, your pen, and your paper, and your catharsis, and this is how we call it, well, bringing all the hot stuff from your inside, putting down on a piece of paper, and you feel relaxed. Let's once again take a look at these five points. I said writing is practical. Secondly, writing is job related. Thirdly, writing is social. Moreover, writing is stimulating. 
And finally, writing is therapeutic. Unfortunately, after, you know, going through all the use of writing skills and its importance in our life, and life means, you know, personal and professional also. Why I said unfortunately? When we see, you know, the reality, when we go into a practical world and see whatever we are talking here, is it put into practice also or not? Let's go to schools and colleges and see what's happening. We are placing this much importance, but perhaps like, you know, the product which comes out from schools and colleges, perhaps uh, they are not uh, that way, you know, instructed or trained in writing skills. Lots of employers, they, you know, moan and groan on the writing abilities of, you know, the newly hired people, then they had to go into lots and lots of trainings for them, and that's very costly. You know, training is a costly decision, frankly speaking. Last year, me and some of my colleagues, you know, we conducted a survey. We went to different schools and colleges to find out the dichotomy between theory and practice, or you can take, take it this way, dichotomy between myth and reality about writing skills. We selected 100 students of uh, different grades, boys and girls, English and Urdu, you know, medium schools, and of course, accordingly, you know, uh, post-grad colleges. And uh, uh, the results of those survey, you know, uh, they were really shocking, frankly speaking. Out of those 100 guys, you know, the happy thing was that everybody agreed, at least everybody agreed that writing should be or writing is you know something which is uh, clear writing is something you know which is uh, let's say coherent it's something you know which is organized but when we put them into practice we were disappointed the disappointment was that theory or you know the belief about writing fine they do understand the stuff they do understand the game but practically very weak. Nearly everybody lacked in clarity, lacked in coherence, lacked in organization. Now, second, uh, third finding was what? 0.25 out of 4. 0.25 out of 4. Not 1, 2, or 3. 0.25 out of 4, guys, you know, they were able to produce very moderate level, I would say very simple persuasive types, I mean persuasive messages. Just very simple, very ordinary level, nothing special about. But yes, 0.25, they had an idea what persuasive writing is. And three out of four, they were seriously, you know, suffering, I would say, suffering from some, you know, uh, writing problems. I mean to say, they really, you know, needed some serious, some, you know, uh, I would say, real, well-planned, long sessions on writing, you know, so that they could really come out of. Okay, so my, another, you know, classroom experience, when I teach writing to my students, you know, they always ask me, after, you know, after listening to this much about the importance, they always ask me a question that, sir, is there any, you know, magic stick under the spell of which, you know, they could sleep and tomorrow when they, wo when they like, you know, wake up, they could see this uh, flaunting feather in their cap. And my, of course, answer to them is, no, dear, we don't have, of course, such a stick, you know. You really got to do it yourself. You really got to put in a lot. It's practical, you know. It's altogether practical. Then, they, of course, like some, some wishful thinkers, you know, do talk about, okay, I mean, if only they had some machine, you know, they could uh, give some, you know, writing instructions to that, like what's to, what's from, what's, you know, date, what's the subject, okay? And then uh, plugging the keyboard into a pad and then sit down in a cozy couch over a cup of uh, coffee and uh, aromatic garlic bread, and see their writing written. I would, I would definitely ask them, 
Come on, wake up. I mean, this doesn't happen, you know, in a real life. Rather, we don't have such a gizmo available in the market, you know, which could really take control of your writing. And why it should, you know? Why there should be such a machine? I mean, just imagine you, your words, your, I mean, ideas are controlled by something else. That would be the last day in your life, I would say. Come on, we can't afford it. Writing is too important to be given it to machines. You should take care of it. You should take a control of it. So, no shortcut, no formula, and no bag of tricks to learn writing skills. You have to do it yourself. And uh, you have to really, like, you know, work it out. Frankly speaking, very, very frankly speaking, and you take it a frank truth that writing skill, yes, as to many, is difficult. So let's see now what, write, what makes writing so difficult. Yes, the first point which I can give you is writing is difficult because it, involve, it involves one rare skill. And that rare skill, I believe, is the straight thinking. And let's see what other like uh, points are involved in the art of writing. The first of all, writing well requires clear thinking. Number two, it requires sufficient time. Number three, a meaningful task. Number four, interest. Number five, practice. And finally, revising. Now, when we say clear thinking, see, all of us have lived many years. We, we live with each other in this life, which is full of drama, you know. We have, God has given us five senses, like we can see, we can observe, we can hear, we can touch, we can taste, we can feel. So all these senses basically are the channels. Channels for what? Information, you know, which is happening all around us, different incidents you know, happen, events happening all around us, through these five channels, they penetrate, they enter us, they sneak into. So I believe we have lots and lots of stuff stored right inside us, a huge stock. What we need to do is, we need to channelize this stock. We need to bring this talk very logically, in a, in a very sequenced manner, out on a piece of paper. So there you need actually clear thinking, straight thinking for writing. All writers are straight thinkers. They have, you know, wonderful abilities to critically think to plan out in split seconds, and then that becomes your habit. With the past, initially, of course, you'll feel it difficult. You'll see a rush of stuff, or you'll see no traffic of thoughts. But with the passage of time, the moment you hold paper and you hold pen in your hands, that, you know, thinking skills are on in your mind, and then your brain starts, like, you know, welling out information. So clear thinking is number one. And I would like to, you know, give you one terminology, IT terminology. They say it's, you know, gigo. I mean, garbage in and garbage out. And I would like to, you know, use the same thing uh, for writing skills, that clarity inside, clarity outside. So if you're clear inside, your messages which you produce, you know, the writings which, which you make, they'll be very, very clear. And let's go down to the point number two, which is sufficient time. Well, my dear students, after straight thinking or clear thinking, you gotta you gotta be you know highly highly patient 
which is something very, very important for writing skills. You would say, if writing is your job, then one has to be skillful enough to produce like in seconds and minutes. Yes, I agree with you, but the point is, initially it doesn't happen. But of course, like, you know, after some months or years, you get it. But initially you got to be highly, highly patient. You got to give yourself, you know, real time. You, you'll have to, out of your 24 hours, you know, give yourself, let's say, 30 minutes or one hour, you know, and very seriously, quality time, very seriously, like, you know, try to learn it. Have some, like, you know, books, have some tools, have, like, you know, uh, dictionaries along with you, and, you know, try to do it, learn it. Our third point, which was meaningful task, you don't need actually to go out of your home to libraries, out of your city or country to find out topics for your writing. Your topics are scattered all around you, inside your home. Therefore, try, initially try to, you know, write on topics which are more realistic, less abstract. I mean, have, I mean, write about, you know, your siblings, write about your parents, write about your friends, describe your home, narrate different things, you know, which happen all around you, okay, and, you know, give words and give thoughts, you know, share your writings with your, uh, you know, uh, your, your brothers and your sisters, your parents, earn appreciation, pat yourself if they say, wow, okay, and if they say, you know, they, they turn down things, no need to worry, you know, work again, try it again, no problem. This is all like, you know, we learn in real life. So we got to start from very realistic topics, and then, you know, we can move further into some abstract, you know, understandings and abstract, you know, trying and writing. Next point was interest. Have interest in this skill also, the way you take interest, you know, in different uh, other, you know, academic or non-academic activities. I believe this is, uh, this skill writing is a little more tiring. I mean, when you compare it with speaking skills, there you really enjoy, you like that, you know, but in here it's a little tiring. It's at times a little boring. This is how people like, you know, uh, you know, give words too. So what you need to do is have some interest in it, okay? And then you'll see, like, you know, definitely come to you. And practice. Practice has no substitute. You've got to practice it again and again. And, you know, there is another very useful ad advice I would like to give you, my students, that when you write something, put it down in your drawer and forget about it, you know, for a week or so, okay? And after a week or so, come back to it, take it out and go through it. And you would see that a huge difference in that week's time you would see that you yourself will be able to assess and evaluate your own done up things. And then you can, you know, become your own, you know, teacher. And this is how you can see your own practiced, you know, uh, assessed by yourself, and then you can re-practice things, and that practice, you know, continue throughout your learning process. And last of all, revising. You revise when we write. What we do, actually, we revise our, you know, writings. We revise for what? We revise for clarity. We revise for, let's say, conciseness. We can revise, revise our pieces for organization. We can check whether in our writing is there any logical uh, sequence and progression. We can revise for words. We can revise for, you know, some grammatical stuff. We can revise whether our uh, sentences, they are effective. You can check, well, what's the impact, overall impact of your writing. Impact is low or impact is high. You can even check uh, the information or, I mean to say, ideas or 
thoughts which you are sharing, you can take care of those also, whether they are appropriate, whether they are sufficient, whether they are relevant, whether all aspects you have covered. You can check uh, the format also. Different pieces of different writing pieces, you know, require different formats. You can check that as well. You can check the mechanics of your writing also. You can check, uh, you know, it's uh, spelling. You can check, I would say, it's uh, punctuation. So this is how, you know, you keep on improving your writing. And the same points, I believe, these five, six points actually uh, make your writing slightly difficult more than, you know, speaking skills or speaking activity. Now, we, this was actually what, uh, that, uh, what writing needs. Let's uh, uh, now take a look of uh, those aspects which you need to, you know, really, really focus on if you want to uh, learn writing uh, or you want to, you know, be successful in this course also. These points which I'm going to share with you now are specially and specially for you. Now, let's take a look at those points which will help you throughout this course if you uh, want to improve your writing skills. First of all, point number one, or you can take it this way, these are things to do. Like, first of all, make your writing real. Number two, read a lot. Number three, brainstorm. Number four, keep a journal. Number five, write together. Number six, use games. Number seven, making lists. And number eight, copy facts. Let's now discuss these points in detail. When I say make it real, and I mentioned it before also, that you can have two types of uh, uh, topics, like the first one, uh, uh, real topics, which are more uh, concrete in nature, and the second one, uh, abstract topics, which are, of course, not that way concrete, and also not that way easy to write about. So initially, you are going to write about uh, concrete topics. You can write on, uh, uh, I mean, every day you read newspapers, so you can, uh, you know, write on some interesting news stories, or uh, if, you're, if you're reading some articles, what you can do is, you know, after reading that article, you can uh, re-express that article in your own words. If you are interested in uh, reading some columns, so you can uh, also re-express that, or you can write a letter to the columnist if this facility is available, or, uh, you know, if uh, uh, there is anything uh, surprise in the newspaper, so you can, like, uh, try, you know, uh, to uh, write uh, some letters to editor and you can like you know see your letter published in the newspaper and later on you know you can uh, you know when you once you get used to a fit you know then you can also take up some abstract topics as well. Secondly uh, my advice is read a lot. When I say read a lot I actually mean that look here Four skills we have, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Now, listening results into speaking. Of course, naturally, you listen more and more. What happens, actually, your speaking gets fine-tuned. Reading. Reading does not result into uh, what you say, speaking, reading results into writing. Out of these four skills, very frankly speaking, the most effective skill, the skill which uh, pays you a lot, the skill which has more to offer, I believe, 
and I, I, I believe you would agree with me, is the reading skill. We call it mother skill. Why? It has many, many things to offer you. Look here. When I ask you, write something on, um, on, on, on some issue, for example, what you need, actually? You need ideas, number one. You need uh, organization of those ideas. You need appropriate words. You need strong collocations. Then also you need word variety. You need uh, element of precision as well, which you have to take care of. Then come down to uh, our syntactical choices. You need, you know, uh, different types of sentences. You need different structures, you know. Then uh, you, you, you need to take care of, let's say, uh, punctuation. You need to take care of spelling. So all these things, you know, of course, have to be learned. Look. Take a look of uh, this reading thing. What reading does? Reading gives you the whole package. Through reading, you get ideas. Through reading, you come to know how writers organize their ideas, how they play with the major and minor information. See, this is a facility, actually, when you are reading newspaper, novel, you're reading, you know, plays, whatever you are reading, you know, that reading is, of course, offering you. That reading, basically, is that piece of reading is a window to that writer's style. So, uh, then you can see that uh, direct and indirect approaches which readers adopt. You can also study this. And reading also gives you, you know, beautiful words, how writers dress up their thoughts. Reading is offering you. And you can also see that why readers, uh, I mean, why writers, you know, they are preferring certain words upon others. You can see this as well. How writer, how writers, you know, are associating words, you know, and you can see that uh, the word variety of the writers, you can see the idiomatic choices, and then you can going, you can go down, I'm mean, into, you know, the structural analysis as well. Reading offers you, you know, variety of structures which you can also copy and you can like you can own them. And next time when, you know, tomorrow you go into, uh, you know, some uh, writing practices, you can make use of these things. So, reading actually, doesn't matter what you read. Take my word, it, it doesn't matter what you read. But important thing is that little analytical ability. Read with little analytical ability. Don't try to skip things. Rather, you have to, you know, jump into, you have to scan things out, and then you can note down those stuff, you know, and tomorrow, make use of it. It, of course, becomes, they become yours. So, read a lot. It will give you ideas. I repeat, it will give you ideas. It will give you understanding of organization. It will give you, you know, lexical choices, and it's going to give you grammatical accuracy also, and the structural variety also. So do it. And, you know, of course, uh, again, uh, it really needs uh, a lot of motivation, and uh, you have to stand for it. Okay, my third point was brainstorming. Look, writers, actually, it's possible that they when they uh, pick up pen and put on a piece of paper that they, they do not have nothing in their mind. So what they do, I mean, quite a few writers actually, they are uh, gifted with this ability that they can uh, in just one second, you know, uh, start, you know, non-stop, which we call as free writing. But very few people do this way. Everybody, professional or novice, everybody brainstorms. Everybody brainstorms. You can brainstorm through different ways. And in, in my next classes, of course, I'll talk about 
the brainstorming skills also and how differently we can, uh, you know, uh, produce, you know, information out of nowhere on a piece of paper. Of course, we'll study that in detail, but try to brainstorm on different, you know, uh, let's say, close or open topics and see, like, how much information, you know, uh, your, 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 your mind or your brain can give you. And trust me, this is my confidence in you that just hold a pen and paper, sit down, you know, in some quiet place and think of a topic. Let's say flower. Write this flower in the middle of a paper and start brainstorming. Switch on, you know, all the, those lights so that, you know, your ideas slowly, slowly, they come down through your ink on a piece of paper. You would see uh, that uh, perhaps you don't need anybody's assistance. You don't need any books to read. You don't, I mean, need, you know, encyclopedia, I mean, to get some information. This, your brain itself is an encyclopedia. But the need, the need to do is a practice. I mean, learn how to do brainstorming. You'll see ideas will rush out, you know, uh, from your mind. And then what you need more, simply, uh, you would uh, see uh, how to put things together in uh, a logical, you know, order. And uh, writing is done. So every day, make it your habit that at least one brainstorming you should do. Topics which can be one word based or topics which can be in the form of issues, in the form of some um, debates, could be anything. Just think of it. Like think of your room. Think of your mother, what you can write about your mother. Think about the kitchen, you know. Think about drawing room. Think about objects, you know. Think about your clock. Think about your pen. Think about yourself. Think about what you want, your wants. Think about your likes or dislikes. There are hundreds and thousands of topics available around you. And start brainstorming. Believe me, you will be a walking encyclopedia. Okay. The fourth one was keep a journal. Look, it's always good to have a journal with you. Now, here, journal I mean, actually, whatever you write, keep a record of it. Whatever you write, keep a record of it. And uh, over the days and weeks and months, see the improvement. Compare and contrast your writings. Okay? And, uh, you know, and you, you can, uh, of course, correct yourself. Plus, there is one more use of journals that, uh, you know, you are, you know, sitting at your home or you are in your office, you are in your market, you know, just take notes about and start writing. This is, I believe, the best uh, advice I can give you, that non-stop, go ahead, and this will also develop your, uh, you know, free writing ability. Now, the fifth point is write together. At times you need, I believe, I mean, since we are human beings, you know, we do uh, need each other, so uh, there's no harm uh, in uh, going into a joint venture. You can uh, take the assistance of your, you know, uh, your, your friend. Rather, it would pay him also. I mean, sit together, okay, and both of you brainstorm on topics. Both of you organize according to your own style, you know, those points, and, you know, dress up the, then, you know, those ideas into language, and then, you know, compare with each other. See, like, uh, you know, what A has done, and see what B has, uh, what B has done, and, you know, learn from each other's style. I mean, this will give you sort of uh, an opportunity, you know, to become each other's teachers. Perhaps your friend's, you know, lexical choices are great, and perhaps your grammatical range is huge, so that you can exchange. Perhaps he is more appropriate in, uh, you know, finding out uh, ideas and thoughts for writing, and, and that thing, you know, perhaps you can learn from him. Perhaps, uh, you know, you are, uh, 
what you say strong in uh, mechanics of writing so there you can help him so there is no harm in going into a joint venture the next advice I can give you is there are lots and lots of games available you know in the market there are softwares you know you can bring for market and therefrom you can learn what they are vocabulary games actually you can make use of those games okay improve your vocabulary every day like make it make it uh, an appointment with your uh, you know word stock you good writers they have a huge stock of words. I again and again and again, like you know, I stress upon the same thing. Writing is a game of three, of course, things: information, organization, and of course, language. And in language, the ma major part is played, of course, by very major part, I would say, is played by the word stock. Have lots and lots of words, and where from you can get those words? Well, they are different tools. Again, for this, uh, fundamentally, you'll have to rely on, uh, let's say, uh, some uh, magazines. Take the example of uh, Reader's Digest, for example. It has got a lot, many things to offer you. There are, I mean, uh, lots and lots of articles in it. There are, you know, the, uh, two, three features also. There are like uh, some 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 uh, fun stuff in it. Some jokes are there. Some personal stories are there. You know, some quotes are there, and uh, vocabulary building activities are there. So what? I mean, get one. You know, digest. This is just an example. You can like you know go and uh, see in, you know in the market if you are interested in sports, for example, buy sports magazines. You're interested in wrestling, go for the wrestling stuff. You know, you're interested in you know heavy bikes, go for the heavy bikes. Doesn't matter. You need to have one of your choice. Bring it home, and then you need one more tool. What's that tool? That tool is dictionary. Now, what you got to do is, or maybe like you know, I mean, uh, to spend a little more. Go for some highlighters, okay, of different colors. All right. Now, uh, and yes, uh, I, I shouldn't forget that. Of course, you need one uh, small copy. All right. Now, these three, four things are around you. Now, just start going through, you know, your, uh, you know, uh, the, that magazine article or whatever. And whatever word you find, you know, uh, interesting, highlight that. Look it up its meanings from dictionary and note it down in the copy. So every day you can like you know uh, make it a habit of learning 10 to 15 words. If not, if it looks as if there are too many, okay, no problem. Go down to five to ten you know words every day. And the next day, uh, when you start you know copying another five to ten or ten to fifteen, revise your previous words, and this is how you can increase your word stock and try to use it. It doesn't matter what language you use. For example, you're learning, let's say, English language you're learning, okay? It doesn't matter that uh, the whole day you speak Punjabi, no problem, you know? Uh, try those words in, you know, your, your Punjabi language, doesn't matter. You speak Urdu, try those English words in Urdu language, doesn't matter. So this is how, you know, you increase the stock, you pump up your vocabulary, and if you want to be a good writer, you've got to do it. And someday, even that can be a planting feather. You can, like, you know, crow about, that you know you have uh, this much stock. I mean, you can be a central, you know, figure among um, amongst your friends. That you have at least one word for every situation. Wow! I mean, what else you need? You know, and that will of course give you sort of convenience also tomorrow when you need when you are into uh, dressing up your thoughts into some language. Of course, this word stock is going to help you a lot. You will not. Uh, you you not suffer from that uh, linguistic constipation, you know, that you do have information, you, perhaps you don't have that right, you know, expression. So this is really, really important. And my next point was making lists. Well, there is uh, no harm in uh, preparing, you know, lists, whatever, like, you know, same way, like, as I have mentioned before, that uh, when you brainstorm, you know, so you, you different, you know, pieces of information, of course, come down from your mind. So you can also the same way you can prepare lists and make it your habit, whatever you do in your life, make, make you know, lists of things. And this is how you can organize yourself. And the last point is copying facts.
don't feel it a shame that uh, you are reading things and you are copying also. It doesn't matter. You find any, you find, of course, we are copying language, for example. Of course, we learn. This is how we learn, actually. Ideas as well, you know, we can copy from. For example, you see some nice code written somewhere, have, uh, you know, uh, a notebook. You can note it down uh, there and then. You find uh, some facts and figures, you know, there and then, you know, you can copy. You find some verses there and then you can copy. Some nice ideas, I mean to say unique ideas, uh, you know, for you, you can, of course, make, you can copy that. There is no shame in it. Tomorrow, when you'll be writing, uh, you know, then that notebook becomes your reference book. Having lots and lots of information you can make use of. So this is how, uh, you know, we can improve our writing. There are a lot, many other things to offer. Of course, in, a, uh, in, in, in my lectures to come, you know, we'll discuss those things in detail. Now, some of you might be wondering that if one can speak good language, then why to learn writing? I mean to say, won't it be enough if one knows to speak adequately? Not this way that whatever we speak, we, uh, you know, put the same thing on piece of paper. Why to, you know, from scratches, start learning altogether a new mode? My dear, writing is not just putting your words down on your paper. Writing is something else. Rather, I would say there's a huge difference between speaking and writing. There's a huge difference. They are, if I'm not exaggerating, they are totally different. Let's take a look now. What are the major differences between speaking and writing? Difference number one. Speech is universal, whereas writing is not. I mean, every child in, uh, the, in the first few years learns to speak automatically. I mean, to say automatically means, you know, through non-systematic manner. I mean, a child is only listening to his parents and his other siblings and automatically, like, you know, reaches the age of uh, half and one or two, you know, speaking automatically comes. Whereas writing, of course, doesn't come this way. Perhaps uh, most of us had to go to schools to learn the art of writing. Second difference is uh, dialectical variations. Look, when we talk about speaking, we see that, I mean, different people speak differently. Take the example of, uh, you know, Britishers. Take the example of Scottish. Take the example of Canadians. Take the example of Americans. Take the example of, you know, Australians. Take the example of Indians, you know. They all speak different English. Their words are different. Their structures are different, you know. Their styles are different. At times, they're like, uh, you know, a uh, word which are specialized, regional. We at times call them, you know, slang. They are totally, totally, you know, I mean, uh, not that way standable. Whereas writing, uh, on the other hand, is standard globally. We have to have standard words, have to have standard structures, you know, and we have to have some standard formats to, uh, you know, follow in writing. The third one is, Speakers use voices and bodies. I mean, you know, there is some rhythm, you know, there is uh, like, you know, facial expression, there's uh, like, you know, gestures, whereas, uh, you know, writers, they simply have to rely on his words, and this is how, like, you know, they deliver messages. The next difference, speakers, you know, they use pause and intonation, whereas writers only use punctuation. Speakers pronounce their words, and writers, you know, spell them out. And uh, speakers, you know, uh, do not plan, actually, when they speak. It's, we, we usually say that, you know, speaking is uh, less planned 
speaking is uh, you know less formal whereas writing is highly planned highly formal say it writing is very very compact and the next point speaking is something where listener is right there in front of us and for writers uh, this facility is not there his readers they don't know where they are uh, I mean to say readers are not there of course in front of them they cannot see the reactions of the readers so well they can assume perhaps but listeners you know I mean speakers this, they enjoy this facility they see their uh, you know listeners uh, nodding you know questioning very you know very much involved in the speech so this is how uh, one uh, another important uh, difference speech is repetitive also whereas writing is not and finally speakers use uh, simple sentences and they connect their simple sentences with uh, lots of uh, ands and buts whereas uh, writers they try more and more complex sentences and they link the complex sentences with pretty advanced connectors so this is how our speaking and writing differ you know from each other so i believe that is the uh, end of uh, our today's lecture in this lecture we try to understand what actually writing is and how we can you know improve our writing uh, through daily practices in my next lecture i'll discuss with you uh, about uh, the qualities and the concerns of uh, good writers with this thank you very much